Hi there, my name is Stefan Maurer and I am the product manager here at Adam Audio in Berlin. In this video, we will have a quick look at complementing a pair of studio monitors with a subwoofer, which is called a 2.1 system. While this is not a new concept, this topic seems to be somewhat of a mystery to a lot of people out there, so we hope that we can shed some light on it during the next couple of minutes. If you have any questions about subwoofers in general, please feel free to put them in the comment section below and we will do our best to answer them one by one. Maybe turning them into individual episodes. Let's get to it. First of all, I would like to address the elephant in the room. Why do I need a subwoofer in the first place? In a nutshell, it's about lower bass, not louder bass. The purpose of a subwoofer in a studio context is to extend the spectrum that you can accurately monitor to make educated mixing and EQ decisions. Being able to monitor the low frequency range really has become a necessity if you look at the ways that music or sound is created and consumed today. Many instruments and sounds go lower than a typical two-way near-field monitor can play, for example an electric bass, a grand piano or big drums. While you may still hear the harmonics of natural instruments or their samples, that is not a given with a lot of synthetic sounds and effects that don't have harmonics. If your speakers cannot reproduce the entirety of the spectrum of your signal, you have no chance of knowing what's happening in these registers. To some extent, it compares to walking around blindfolded. Very often, 2.1 setups are perceived to be immensely expensive and almost a luxury to have. This is not necessarily the case, and to prove our point, we decided that the stars of this video will be the two T5V near-field monitors and a T10S subwoofer from the T-Series. This is the most affordable 2.1 setup that we have in our product range, adding up to around about 750 euros or 800 US dollars for the complete package. Of course, the following information and tips are also true for any other system higher up the price ladder. It might seem unreasonable to spend a similar amount of money on a single subwoofer as you may have already spent on your pair of studio monitors. But the things that drive up the price for a subwoofer are directly linked to its features and benefits. The efficiency of a dynamic driver is very low, maybe 5% at best, and it even decreases further in the low frequencies. So for proper low frequency reproduction, you really have to push the physics of a speaker. To reproduce low frequencies with the accuracy and levels required in a recording studio, you need a solid system of a low range in woofer, which usually goes with the large surface of the membrane and a big magnet, a potent amplifier and a sturdy cabinet. Even more so, the lower you want to go. So, every bit of low-end extension literally comes at a price. Alternatively, having subwoofer capabilities in a studio monitor, which is designed for broadband reproduction of sound, comes with an immense price increase and the form factor would suffer a lot. Just imagine fitting a T10S subwoofer performance into two speakers with significantly larger drivers, no harm to the other registers and corresponding cabinets on your desk. Also, you need to control the spectrum that is reproduced by the subwoofer and the studio monitors, often called satellites, in a 2.1 or surround context. So satellites and subwoofers don't overlap more than required and don't play in the same frequency range. This is usually accomplished by a crossover circuit integrated in the subwoofer. The sub takes in the two signals from the audio source, keeps the bass portion to itself and filters out that very part of the signal before passing the processed signal onto the speakers. That's great, but it also means there's a lot of high-grade electronics involved to make for a crossover with a low noise that does not deteriorate the audio signal going to the satellites. Which leads us to my next point. When you have a specialized speaker, like a subwoofer handling the low frequencies, you relieve the studio monitors of doing the heavy lifting and you free up a lot of headroom for the mid frequencies. As a consequence, the entire system is likely to produce less distortion. A good low-end extension and acoustic design of a subwoofer does only half the trick though. You also have to make sure that the subwoofer is properly connected and dialed in with the satellites to make the system work. To make things clearer, let's look at the backplate of the T10S. 
The simplest and most common way of driving such 2.1 systems is to route the stereo signal coming from your audio source to the subwoofer and daisy chain the studio monitors. In order to match the subwoofer to your studio monitors, you need some sort of control about the subwoofer level, the crossover frequency and the phase. With the level pod, you match the volume of the subwoofer to the level of the studio monitors. The crossover frequency defines the upper cutoff frequency of the subwoofer output and the lower cutoff frequency of a high pass filter which is applied to the signal for the daisy chain satellites. With this switch you can basically decide which part of the low frequency information is handled by the sub or the studio monitors. The phase switch can be useful when positioning the subwoofer in your room as you have to make sure that the subwoofer and the studio monitor output arrives in phase at your listening position. When you are in the market for a subwoofer, please make sure that those basic features are covered in one way or another. These will make life so much easier when setting up your 2.1 system. As an alternative to the onboard adjustments, you can use external base management, which requires additional outboard gear. These systems can be useful to create more complex low end extension setups, which we will not dive into during this episode. The option to use a foot switch to bypass the subwoofer and crossover and listen to the monitors exclusively is a very useful feature too, especially if you work on material that does not always require the low-end extension or if you would like to give your neighbors downstairs a little break. We do have a wide range of subwoofers available in our portfolio, from a relatively small one equipped with a 7-inch woofer all the way up to a 21-inch beast, which we like to call the washing machine. So how do you eventually decide which subwoofer is the best to complement a certain pair of studio monitors? The T10S here works best with our T5V and T7V near field monitors, but is also suitable for other similar speakers. However, it would not be a particularly good fit for, let's say, a pair of main monitors, because A, you would gain very little low end extension as the monitors themselves can already play very low, and because B, there would be a big difference in the max SPL they can reproduce. You want a subwoofer to at least be on par with your studio monitors in terms of max SPL. Popular pairings from our product range, apart from the T5V and the T10S combination, would be the A7X and the Sub-10 Mark II, or the S2V and the Sub-12. The size of your room and its acoustic behavior plays a very important role too. They are limiting factors as to what kind of subwoofer makes sense in your specific environment, which is a topic worth of its own episode. You can find a few insights on this in the FAQ section on our website, just follow the link in the description below. Basically, you have to take care of a few things only. The sound coming from your subwoofer and studio monitors should be in phase. Also, the level of the subwoofer and the studio monitors should be matched. Easier said than done, and so a little while ago, we have created a dedicated tutorial on how to calibrate and set up a subwoofer using the A77X and the Sub-15 as an example. If you want to get into the details right away, I suggest that you stop this video, head over to the tutorial and continue watching this video afterwards. And no worries, the rest of us will just wait here for you. Excellent. Now that we have been through all of this, let's play the devil's advocate for a second. And of course, it has to be said that the addition of a subwoofer is not a must. There are other ways to monitor the low end, actually two of them that come to mind. First, a lot of producers and engineers decide against a subwoofer because their studio monitors already have a very broad frequency range, at least enough for what they are doing. For example, our S3H midfield monitors go as low as 30Hz, which is very similar to the T10S which we have talked about earlier. But that would be comparing apples to oranges. Those are designed for different applications and definitely not as budget friendly. And still, the benefits of adding a matching subwoofer apply here only for lower frequency range. Second. 
A good pair of headphones like our SP5s can take you a long way, but you will always have to switch back and forth between two systems without ever getting the full picture from your studio monitors, which you've chosen because you trust them. Plus, with headphones, you always have a bit of a floating point of reference in the bass frequency specifically, as the coupling is very sensitive. For example, Wearing a different set of glasses with different temples could be the equivalent to a tilted window versus a completely open one while working with speakers in a room. As a quick summary, you may take from this video that subwoofers can significantly and effectively extend the range and quality of your monitoring system if you choose the right complement for your satellites and set it up correctly. That's it for now and we hope you find this information useful. Let us know your feedback and which topics we should cover next in the comment section below. So long and thanks for watching. Tschüss!